Hello, welcome to another Parallel Project Training podcast. These podcasts are linked to the APM PMQ syllabus that is launching in September 2024. My name's Ruth Phillips and I'm here with my colleague Lisa Regan, who is one of Parallel's senior trainers. Good morning, Lisa. Morning, Ruth. Happy okay. to talk about quality today. Quality today, yes, quality management. So this is a big and incredibly important topic because if we don't deliver to quality, then we're unlikely to realise benefits. Uh, and that's the whole point of what we're doing on our project. Uh, it's really central to successful projects. So let's go to the syllabus and have a look at what the learning objectives are and then we'll pin down those learning outcomes in a little bit more detail. So our learning objective on quality management is to understand quality management as the ability to ensure that outputs are delivered in accordance with requirements. So there's a, quite a few things there. Lisa, could you just give me a, a whistle-stop tour about what quality management is? Quality management for me is that high-level umbrella. It's what we're trying to do, and I'm sure it says it in the learning objective, it doesn't say it in so many words, but we're talking about making products that are fit for purpose. That is the key phrase I always think about when I'm thinking about quality. How are we going to do it? Not only what are we going to produce, how are we going to produce it? It's making sure that whatever you're delivering at the end of your project is what those requirements are. How are you actually going to satisfy them to the level that the user or the, the customer, whichever one you're dealing with, is is expected, yeah? yeah? So not only what you're going to deliver, but how are you going to deliver it? So for me, quality management is that, like I said, the overall, the overarching. Yeah. yeah. And and going back to the, uh, the podcast on requirements management, this is something that we need to have been thinking about from the very beginning, and it's coming into its own in the back half of the, that, that process as, as well, making sure that we're meeting and delivering in accordance uh, with those requirements. Let's have a look now at the learning outcomes then. Um, we're breaking quality management into a little bit more detail uh, and understanding some of the parts of that. So the first learning outcome is to understand what is meant by quality planning, yeah. including quality indicators and how these relate to the business case. So tell me then, what is meant by quality planning? So quality planning for me, whenever I'm talking about planning, I talk about roles and responsibilities. So I'll I'll come back to that. That is one of the things in the quality plan, you know. Who's going to do it for you? Is it going to be you as the project manager? Do you have a quality team as part of your wider organisation, for example? But the quality plan is much more than that. It's not just roles and responsibilities. It's about regulations, standards, specifications, and those acceptance criteria. You know, is it called the Pentagon now? The time, cost, quality, risks and benefits. How are you going to be measured at the end? So that should come under the quality plan. So giving guidance, what does good look like? That's really interesting that you said that because sometimes when we say quality, we kind of got this feeling that it's high quality and in yep. certain circumstances, absolutely, it could be yep. the top, the highest, luxury, yep. et cetera. But it's yep. essentially what is fit for purpose. And absolutely. if that purpose is, this is a prototype, this is just a working model, actually, yep. it doesn't need to be the best, but what yep. good looks like for that. It is something that we can use to achieve our objectives. So that's a good definition of it. You know, it's fit for purpose. What does good look like? Absolutely. So quality planning for me has got two strands to it. It's mm. got quality control and quality assurance. And again, who's going to do each one of those? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so tell me a little bit more about those because there's quite a bit of terminology that we're using here. So first of all, what's quality control then? So quality control for me is pass or fail. It's very black and white. It's have have you satisfied, yes or no. It's inspection and testing is okay. quality yeah. control. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally checking something and saying, is it good enough or not? Pass or fail. Yeah, yeah. it's very okay. it's very black and white. Whereas yeah. Yeah. quality assurance is about building in quality. So it's providing confidence that you're sticking to the right processes, the right methods. Um, you know, what are the acceptance criteria and are you, you know, are you moving in the right direction across your project? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I remember somebody saying to me that, you know, we, it, it shouldn't be about weeding out the duds. It's about providing evidence that the right level of quality has been met. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it is quite a contrast to quality control. So like, like I said, for me, quality control is very black and white. Yes. Whereas yeah. quality assurance is more about building in quality. Yeah. That's the, yeah. you know, that's the real kind of um, distinction for me. Okay, fantastic. 
There's a few more uh, bits uh, included with this uh, yeah, learning yeah. outcome. What's meant by quality planning, including quality indicators? What are quality indicators? Quality indicators are those things that you specifically measure. So there's some kind of marker, but they give you an insight into how you're progressing. So they're kind of a guiding light. I, I guess that's the way to think of a quality indicator. So they could be in terms of performance. So it could be things like efficiency of your processes. It could be literally what's the outcome. So managing the measuring the quality of the end product. You know? right. And it could okay. be something a bit more grey, stakeholder yeah. satisfaction, but still you could measure that. Could um how satisfied are the stakeholders with what you've delivered? Yeah. So it okay. could be things so, like that. Yeah. Give me some examples there of, of quality indicators. Then. Okay. So if we go for examples from the construction industry to yeah. start with, things like quality of materials. So Making right. sure that you've got materials that meet industry standards mm, comes okay. into that, definitely. Yeah. Could be um, compliance to environmental regulations, yeah. yeah? Green building certifications, for example, things like that. For me, at the heart of construction, on-site safety is a great example of quality indicators. Number of accidents, number of incidents, how how are you sticking to the, the regulations yeah. and, and avoiding safety issues? Okay. Um, so a couple of construction examples. If we move to more iterative ways of working, so in software projects, quality indicators could be things like the number of issues that get reported. It, okay. it could yeah. be the percentage of your product that, that passes your UAT, your user acceptance yeah. testing. It could be how well is your code sticking to standards and best practices. Yeah. So they're all indicators of how well the work is being done. Yeah, absolutely. And a wider example in terms of healthcare projects, similar quality indicators could be a register of patients that have got a certain disease or a percentage. How many people over 18 with a new diagnosis have not been reviewed within 10 days? Things yeah. like ambulance waiting times and yeah. times that you, you were sat in a corridor waiting to be checked into a hospital. So there's probably hundreds of quality indicators you used in healthcare yeah. settings. So am I right in thinking then that these quality indicators can be used to monitor how you're doing with, with quality, not just quality of the end product. It's also qual quality as we're going along. Absolutely. Quality indicators are directly linked with the business case. And okay. when we talked about business case in another podcast, we said that the business case is reviewed multiple times, didn't yeah. we? And so quality indicators can help us to justify the investment, yeah? Making right. sure that what we're delivering is in alignment with what we promised in the business case. And more specifically, even drilling down benefits. We always talk about yeah. benefits being part of the business case. We are confirming with these quality indicators that those benefits are hopefully, fingers crossed, going to materialize, whatever they were. So your quality indicators are showing you that you're, you're on the right track yeah, still. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm just thinking about all of the, the, the far-reaching effects of this, actually. I would say you could probably use this within your stakeholder engagement and communications because, again, this provides confidence for people, isn't it? That, absolutely. Yeah, okay, we're going through this period of change, but look, the numbers are ticking up in the right direction. We're getting where we want to, to go. Yeah. We, we're doing well on this, so it can be... You know, and I'm just thinking about all of the podcasts uh, that we've got, maybe team management, motivation, morale of the team, yeah. et, et cetera. There's so much that this information could be used for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, risk. I, I forgot to yeah. throw that one in. Oh, my risk. goodness. So, yeah, how could we forget about risk? Yeah. <laughs> so quality indicators can tell us that we're not in, you know, in alignment with the business case in that way. And they can tell us you need to do something. You need to put some kind of action in place. Yeah. Or this maybe is like early warning. Absolutely. They're, yeah. they're not going up, they're going yep. down. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So overall, I would say indicators support your quality plan, if that makes sense. It's telling you that you're still working in the right direction. It's not just about sticking to standards, but it's making sure that we're achieving all the objectives of the project. And fundamentally, it's my favourite phrase, meeting stakeholder expectations. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Which, which is that the whole reason for being for the yeah, for, for the project, isn't it? Delivering success against uh, those expectations. Yeah. And and there's there's a lot of thinking that has to go into this. Which indicators to choose? Are they yeah. really going to show us what we need? Um, yeah. All of that is wrapped up within quality planning as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Do you mind if I just revisit quality control, Ruth? Do you mind? Because I don't think I've dug into that in enough detail. 
quality control. I think I said it's inspection and testing. It's very black and white. Have you passed or have you failed? But yeah. it's about stopping bad quality getting to the customer. It's that real kind of hard and fast, no, it's not good enough. And quality control for me has to be done by someone from your project team because they've got to be technically capable to be able to judge whether that's passed or failed. So going back to quality planning, and you said to me, I always think about quality planning or planning in, in general as roles and responsibilities. It's about yep. getting the right people involved that's in right. the quality control as well. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And yeah, fantastic. To, to make sure those test plans, what, what, mm -hmm. what does pass or fail mean? Uh, you need to manage that through change control as well to make sure that any amendments that you make, you know, someone suddenly says 90% is good enough and you've always been working to 95%, you have to tell everybody. You know, it, it, again, it's configuration, isn't it? Another uh, subject that we've, we've done another podcast on, but you must make sure that any of those quality plans are updated. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And And talking about how we might do this in a slightly different way in an iterative project, um, iterative projects, particularly software development, quite often talk about something called test-driven development. So right. essentially, you're you're putting the, the the test first rather than putting the functionality first. Is saying what what do we need to prove, and right. then write the code to pass right. the test and keep right. refining, refining, refining until it passes the test. Right. So actually, that whole process of planning what the tests are going to be what are we testing who's going to test it how's that going to happen and then absolutely the change control of the code as it goes through those different iterations in order to pass that test really really crucial on making sure that we're delivering something that works when we come to release that to the customer absolutely so yeah. i like that about how quality it is relevant to linear and iterative and yeah. iterative ways absolutely. of working isn't it yeah so I think we've covered off that first um, learning objective really nicely uh, now. Looking at quality planning, we've delved down into quality control and quality assurance and talked yep. about quality indicators and also relationship to the business case and risk plus yep. lots of other things. Our yep. second learning outcome then is about knowledge of how quality control techniques are used to determine whether success criteria are met. What can we say about that? Well, because quality control is very black and white, it's pass or fail, and finding, like we've said, finding a problem to stop it being passed to the customer, really, that is giving you that, are we meeting the success criteria or not? There's nothing in between, is there? So you're either satisfying your success criteria or you're not. So your quality control is the kind of the supporting act to that. Well, we've had a really good chat about quality there, a quality chat, should we, <laughs> quality we say? Chat, that's good. It's that, definitely that, that, fit for purpose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll have to see whether it meets our stakeholders' expectations. We might get some <laughs> feedback on, the, on, on that. Um, okay, fantastic. We've looked at the overall uh, quality management process. Yeah. And then we dug down into the learning outcomes. We looked at quality planning, quality indicators and relationships to the business case, and then really focused down on quality uh, control techniques to make sure that we actually deliver uh, the success criteria for our project. Thank you very much, Lisa, for okay. joining me on the podcast today. Thanks, Ruth. No problem. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.